Google just announced Genie 3, their world model that is fully controllable, like a video game, and fully immersive. This is going to change movies, TV, video games, everything. And according to Google, is a big leap towards AGI. Let me show you some demos, and then I'm gonna tell you all about it. All right, so check this one out. A gorilla wearing a fancy outfit, walking through some buildings, and you can see on screen, they're actually showing that this is fully controllable. Now, what I want you to look at is how consistent everything is. Every single frame is generated based on the previous frames and control from the user. That's what you're seeing down here in the bottom left corner. Those are the actual arrow keys that people are using to navigate through this environment. It is truly stunning. Next, check out this one of a mountain biker going through some hills and it just looks so realistic. Watch this. You can see the user is controlling it by pushing forward, pushing left sometimes. You can even look down looking back up, looking right. Look at that, all of it staying absolutely consistent, high quality, 720p, and I'll touch on that in a little bit. But yeah, this is one of the most impressive demos that I have ever seen. Here's a little firefly flying through what looks like a cartoonish forest with little houses in the trees. And I mean, it is just absolutely stunning. So you can go for a very stylized look. You can go for realism. Here's another one, looks like a tropical island under a storm. The waves are splashing over the barrier. The concrete, the roads, the trees moving, it all looks so incredibly real and so impressive. Here's one of what looks to be a beautiful hike up in the mountains somewhere. Kind of looks like Lake Tahoe a little bit. and. You can turn all the way around, look at the other side, really cool. All right, and then in this one, it looks like somebody riding a jet ski through a very lit up river, and let's watch. It is so incredible, and there's one thing in particular I'm gonna pause and show you that just blows my mind. Okay, so it's going, and watch this. Did you see that? The light? moved out of the way as the rider rode through it. So the light is there, and then as he rides through it, the light actually moves out of the way. Such a minor, subtle detail, but so important for realism. And look at this, in the mirror of the jet ski, you can actually see the reflection of what's behind him. And not only that, when he runs into something, it actually looks like the person ran into something. The jet ski kind of moves backwards and reacts to that physical presence of that object. Just absolutely beautiful. So let me tell you all about it. This is Genie 3. This is the evolution of Genie 2, Genie 1, the Genie series of models. This is what they are calling a world model. It is not VO. So you can think of VO as generating video, but not controllable. The Genie series of models are fully controllable. Today we are announcing Genie 3, a general purpose world model that can generate an unprecedented diversity of interactive environments. So world models can be used for so many things. They can be used for training robots, agents, but they could also be used for creating video games, movies, television shows. There's just so much potential there. World models are also a key stepping stone on the path to AGI, since they make it possible to train AI agents in an unlimited curriculum of rich simulation environments. This is a really important point that Google is making. They're essentially saying that we can now give agents an unlimited playground for them to interact with, to get better, to learn, to make mistakes, to succeed, and continue to improve themselves. This is very similar to AlphaGo, which we've talked about a lot lately, basically allowing AI or agents to play with themselves. And then when we remove humans from the loop, we are only constrained by the amount of compute that we can throw at these models. So if you put an agent in an environment and just let it explore and play, it is able to learn so much faster and so much more scalably than if we are having to give it feedback the entire time. Genie 3 is our first world model to allow interaction in real time while also improving consistency and realism compared to Genie 2. And I'm gonna show you the comparison between Genie 2 and Genie 3. The advancements are truly stunning. And you know what else is super impressive? The sponsor of today's video, Juni by JetBrains. Starting a new vibe coding project is awesome. You're having a lot of fun, you're building so quickly, everything seems to be working, but then at a certain point, it gets really difficult and very frustrating. When the project gets to be too big, traditional vibe coding tools just don't work as well. Juni allows you to bring your vibe coded projects to production level. So whether you're at the beginning, the middle, or you're getting ready to scale it up, 
your project can get completed by Juni. It also allows me to fully delegate tasks off to the Juni agent so I can essentially just hands off supervise what Juni is doing. Juni is available in JetBrains IDEs like IntelliJ IDEA, PyCharm, and Android Studio. And it also supports languages like Java, Kotlin, Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby, Rust, and PHP. So give Juni a try. I'll drop a link down in the description below so you can check it out easily. Thanks again to Juni from JetBrains for sponsoring this video. And now back to the video. So how did they actually do this? Well, a little bit of technical details from the blog. During the auto regressive generation of each frame, the model has to take into account the previously generated trajectory that grows with time. So it's not enough just to look at the previous frame. They have to consider the previous frame and every frame that came before it and how they all relate to each other. For example, if in the world model, some kid throws a ball, they have to know what the trajectory of the ball is. So if they look at only the previous frame or the previous few frames, they're not really going to be able to predict where that ball is going to go realistically. But if they look at every frame that came before, the release from the kid's hand, the trajectory, the slope of the ball as it launches, then that's how you can recreate the physics really well and accurately. For example, if the user is revisiting a location after a minute, the model has to refer back to the relevant information from a minute ago. To achieve real-time interactivity, this computation must happen multiple times per second in response to new user inputs as they arrive. This is extremely computationally expensive to run, for sure. And as you saw in that hiking video up in the forest, you need to be able to look at the lake turn around, look at whatever's behind it, and then turn back to the lake, and it has to be exactly consistent for the realism to be there. And it's a very difficult problem to solve. Generating an environment autoregressively is generally a harder technical problem than generating an entire video, since inaccuracies tend to accumulate over time. And listen to this, Genie3's consistency is an emergent capability. What do they mean by that? They mean with more training, scaling up, they are seeing this consistency come out of all of the training they were able to do. It is not something that they pre-programmed into the model. It is something that just emerged as a property of the model plus scale. So Google also compares against nerfs and Gaussian splatting and says that although these allow for consistent and controllable 3D environments, they depend on the provision of explicit 3D representation. By contrast, worlds generated by Genie 3 are far more dynamic and rich because they're created frame by frame based on the world description and actions by the user. And not only that, you can prompt it while it's going. So if you're walking down the street and all of a sudden you want it to start raining, you can simply say, make it start raining. Let me show you an example of that. So these are called prompt events. Watch this. So here's somebody walking down canals and we're going to prompt with a man in a chicken suit appears from the left side of the shot and runs down. There we add a man on a jet ski emerges. Here is a crimson dragon. So you can literally add anything to the scene in real time. All right, let me show you now the comparison of Genie 2 to Genie 3 because you are going to have your mind blown at the progress made by the Google DeepMind team. So on the left, we have Genie 2. If you remember this video, it was truly incredible. And on the right, we have Genie 3. You can tell much more consistent, much more detailed, and also much longer generations. On the left side, it's already ended, but on the right side, it's still going. And more importantly, you're able to explore the world in much more depth. So exciting to think about the future of video games. Here's another comparison. On the left, we have Genie 2. On the right, Genie 3. Look at the difference in quality. On the left, Genie 2, all of the buttons on the side wall are blurry and kind of merged together and definitely lower quality than 720p. On the right, all of the buttons are individualized. You can actually see them and it is much higher quality. Here the person on the left walks through the door and that's the end of that generation. Here on the right with Genie 3 walks through the door. There's an entire world back here and you can continue exploring that world. So check this out. As the chair passes in front of the view, everything stays consistent. That is incredibly important. And the final comparison, we have what looks to be an RPG, somebody walking around a dungeon with a light. And yeah, the one on the right is clearly higher quality, more consistent, just looks better. And obviously 
much longer as well. As this character jumped, the shadow actually expanded, looked realistic, all the lighting across the walls, the floor, it just looks so good. Now, one thing is they didn't give it a release date or at least a testing date for the public. It is only internal at Google right now, which is unfortunate because I really wanna get my hands on this and start playing with it. All right, here's another example, a little raccoon character going around this village. Very cute, kind of childish in a way. Maybe a Pixar movie in the future or Pixar video game, I should say. Everything stays consistent. That is the most impressive part. And honestly, the quality too is just so good. Now, the one thing that seems to be missing is sound. Now, we know VO3 can do sound, so maybe it's only a matter of time before sound is generated in real time as a reaction to the interaction between the character and the environment. All right, now check this one out and how realistic it is. So it's a man in a suit walking through a field. There looks to be a very realistic spaceship in the background. And look at that. So impressive. As he's walking, you can see all of the flowers moving out of the way. There's definitely some blurriness around that, but still very impressive. And we can see as he walks closer to the spaceship, the spaceship is increasing in size. He looks to be getting closer to it. And you can see towards the end of the video, there's a little bit of issue with blurriness with the flowers, but still overall, very, very cool. All right, and last, maybe one of the most impressive ones just from a technical perspective is this person painting a wall blue. Look at this. Every time there's another layer of paint, it looks more consistent. Definitely a little bit of awkwardness with the movement there. I do see an issue right here where you would expect to see some kind of reflection in that window. But back to painting. Yeah, so you can see right here, if the paintbrush isn't touching the wall, nothing's being painted, then they move forward a little bit and it starts actually applying the paint on the wall. Looking down, there's the person. So cool. So I was super impressed with this. I cannot wait to try it out. Do you think this is the future of video games because it sure does seem that way to me. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.